Welcome back to another edition of Modern Dallas TV. I'm Jeff Levine with ModernDallas.net. This week we visit a cool contemporary in Lake Highlands, stop by RO2 Art and talk about their show Uncertain Places with Ken Kraft and Adam Neese. And lastly, Tally Dunn talks about the art of collecting art. Stick around for the art scene, the calendar, and enjoy this edition of Modern Dallas TV. Experience LED at Lights Fantastic Pro, our sponsor on Modern Dallas TV. Lighting is changing at warp speed and there's definitely an LED revolution going on. You'll see a curated selection of some of the coolest new LED fixtures from some of the best brands around the world. Visit their 12,000 square foot showroom minutes from the new Nebraska Furniture Mart in Louisville off the Sam Raven Tollway. Come see for yourself how lighting can enhance and change your next project. Affordable Stunning New Build by Highland Classic Homes at 9014 Guildhall Drive, located in Lake Highlands, which lies north of Northwest Highway and White Rock Lake. Surrounded by wonderful mid-century modern homes, the area is evolving into a go-to destination for young professionals. Gorgeous drive-up appeal gives way to a contemporary style home that's spacious with its open living and tons of natural light with a wonderful water feature and a linear fireplace. Kitchen features Bosch stainless steel appliances, gas cooktop, double oven, butler's pantry while the living overlooks the backyard with a covered patio and a built-in grill. The home has four bedrooms, four and a half baths, three living areas and is listed at 789000 Schools are zoned to Richardson Independent School District and the house is Greenbelt Texas Certified. This home is listed by Glenn Christie of Nathan Grace. You can view the listing at their website at nathangracerealestate.com or view the listing on our website at moderndallas.net. Modern Dallas Art this week is here at RO2 Art. I'm here with Jordan Roth. Uh, this is a great show, Uncertain Places with Ken Kraft and Adam Neese. What a great landscape concept idea. Thank you, Jeff. I, I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, that you joined us for this. It's an interesting show because um, what the viewer first encounters when they walk in are what appear to be traditional landscapes. And um, in fact, they're multifaceted paintings and, and photographs. In Ken Kraft's uh, case, for instance, you've got in this painting a beautiful cityscape and juxtaposed with it is a comic. All of his uh, paintings are character driven with a landscape or painting that uh, beautiful uh, talks about, you know, human uh, or, or rather um, the beauty of nature, juxtaposing it with comics that um, discuss predicaments uh, that occur in human nature. And he's got several recurring characters in, the, in these comics. And this is something that um, is, uh, it, it's part of his body of work that, that is continuing to grow. And with uh, Adam, with Ken, we've um, paired him with Adam Neese. It's a really interesting combination. You've got um, another artist who is approaching landscape from another completely different point of view. In this series, the artist visited Finland um, and actually approached Finland by bicycle. So he arrived in Stockholm and bicycled to his uh, residency in Finland, experiencing this landscape. Um, the, the, the views and, that he would see from his bike were completely surreal. There was no sense of reality that he could even grasp as he, as he rode through Finland. So trying to, um, trying to portray that in photography was a challenge. And what he did is um, he employed a process that he uses quite often and uh, edits his photography completely in camera. And in this case, found a book called Beautiful Finland and is actually taking found images from the book and layering them on a light table and um, taking photographs of these found images to try to recreate the feeling or what he calls an unfeeling of you know being in that particular place. Well, it's a great show. The combination of artists and how you pair them, fantastic. Thank you. Look forward to seeing a lot more of their work because Ken's work is tremendous as well. 
and you moving to a new space, which will be exciting. We hope to see you in March. We've got Thank a great you. new show coming up there. And uh, there's an art talk here, I think. There is an art talk. It is on Sunday the 21st at 2 p.m. and then we'll roll that into a closing reception. Wonderful. Definitely stop by. It is a pop-up gallery. It is. So make sure you make, contact Jordan or check their times on the website and they can see you at ro2art.com? Yes, that's our, uh, le uh, the letter O number two art.com. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Jordan. You bet. Appreciate it. On a regular occasion, we always get asked, what does it take to be a collector? So while we're here at Tally Dunn's gallery, we decided, Tally, tell us a little bit about what it takes to be an art collector and where does it start and, and how does it evolve? Sure, it's super fun. That's what I'll say to begin with, is that it's a really exciting experience. It's really, a, should be a very pleasurable experience. But on the other hand, what I'd also say is it can be intimidating for a collector or someone just thinking about their first art purchase. So I'll speak a little bit to a collector or someone that's, or maybe doesn't even consider themselves a collector. They're beginning to think about buying art. And one of the things that I always like to say is it starts out really easy of just what do you like, looking at art that you like, looking at good art, developing an eye. And I always recommend going to museums, look, starting with the, the very best art that you can find and looking at that and, and trying to decide what your tastes are. Do you like representational work? Do you like abstract scale and issue? Those are kind of basic things to think about. And then start going to galleries and looking and feeling comfortable, looking where you feel that there's a fit and where you're comfortable asking questions. Again, galleries should be approachable. They should answer your questions. I always say there's no such thing as an art emergency. It should be something that's a really enjoyable experience and hopefully an educational experience for you as well. So looking at museums, starting to learn what you like and don't like so that you can provide feedback when you visit a gallery. And then going through that process, taking it from being in a museum and looking at what you like and don't like, and then going to a gallery and starting to look at the artwork there and visiting with them and asking questions about it. And hopefully, if you have the right match with an art dealer that you like, with a gallery that you like, they guide you through the process of understanding the range of an artist's work, what they make from small to large, understanding how their work is priced, um, again, you can't ask too many questions. I would always want to know, tell me the range of this artist's work. What is the least expensive to the most expensive? Where does the artwork that you're interested in by that artist fall in that continuum? And also look at the artist's biography. It's very telling. I always start there. Show me the artist's bio. I'd like to look at their education, the group exhibitions, the one-person exhibitions that they've been in. And you'll start to see a correlation between the experience of the artist and their, um, their bio and pricing and how artwork is priced. And all of this is to kind of build a confidence in, in being guided through the process of I've identified a piece of art, I've identified an artist I like, I'm ready to make a purchase. And those are the things that I really look to is understanding price, understanding the artist's background a little bit, but more than anything, finding someone that you feel that you can develop a relationship with and, and trust and let the professional, let the, let the art dealer guide you through hopefully a really exciting and enjoyable process for you. For more information, you can visit Tally Dunn Gallery at tallydunn.com or visit the gallery and touch base with Tally and learn more about the process. Thank you. To wrap up this edition of Modern Dallas TV on the art scene, most of the galleries have fresh new work hanging on their walls. So visit moderndallas.net, see the listings and see what's current and available in your area. On the calendar of events, the famous Modernist Meetup comes around on February the 24th 
from 6 to 8 p.m. We'll be at Sink Gallery at 905 Dragon Street from 6 to 8 p.m. If you'd like to see a little more modern, you can visit our website, see Modern Dallas TV previous editions, as well as listen to the Modernist Radio Show on our website at moderndallas.net. See some of the articles from our writers, Todd Camplin and Georgina Callan. And if you're in the market for a modern, mid-century modern, contemporary home, high-rise or loft, we simply have the finest moderns in Dallas. For this week, it's a wrap. See you later. <laughs>